In the Bible, it says that our God is a consuming fire. He is not a tame God. Sometimes he burns and purifies. He is not in our control. You see this in the sacrament of confirmation. It's about the fire of God's love sweeping down upon our lives and filling us with his power. There is a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit, just as there was on the disciples on the day of Pentecost. It's not the first time we receive the Holy Spirit who comes upon us at baptism but there is a new energy, a confirmation and a strengthening of his gifts. We are anointed with the sacred oil of chrism as we hear the words, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. There are great debates about the best age for confirmation. In the Eastern churches, you are normally confirmed as a baby just after your baptism. But in the Western tradition, it varies a lot depending on what your bishop decides and what the tradition is. It can be anywhere from the age of seven or eight to your late teens. But whatever the age, the meaning is the same. We are filled with the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are their traditional names, wisdom, understanding, right judgment, courage, knowledge, reverence, and the fear of the Lord, a fear that brings not anxiety, but a sense of wonder and awe in his presence. Do you see how amazing this is? Most of us feel very ordinary. We are aware of our own weaknesses. We often feel trapped by circumstances. I think that's why there is such a fascination with superheroes today. We like to imagine we are saving the universe with our supernatural powers. But when we are confirmed, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and sets us free. He gives us new understanding, a new sense of purpose. He lifts us up into the life of God, the Most Holy Trinity. We are ordinary, sinful people, but he helps us to be saints. And sometimes he gives us very special gifts, the power of healing or prophecy or working miracles or speaking in tongues, the gift of compassion or generosity or teaching the faith or preaching the gospel. This is not some superhero fantasy. It's the reality of following Jesus Christ. I was sitting in a chapel in Brentwood a few years ago. There was an unusual painting on the wall. The painting shows a man dressed in ordinary clothes. He's not a religious figure or a character from the Bible. His hands are held out before him cupped together in a bowl. And in his hands, a fire is burning. Not a candle or a lantern, but just the fire itself held in his hands. The flames dancing before him. His eyes are serene and purposeful, looking intensely at you, the viewer. It's a strange painting. I think it says something about the Holy Spirit and the gift of confirmation. We need to treasure this gift, to protect it, to hold it carefully in our hands. But we also need to offer it to the world. Jesus said that he has come to cast fire on the earth. He sends us out on mission. The Christian faith is too valuable to keep for ourselves. If you are already confirmed, I hope you can appreciate the gift of the Holy Spirit more and more. If you are not, then maybe it's something you can hope for in the future. Let me finish with two well-known prayers. The first is a prayer to the Holy Spirit. It reminds us 
that we can talk to the Holy Spirit and pray to him just as we can to Jesus and to the Father. It goes like this. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Amen. And the second is a prayer to the Father. O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gift of the same Spirit, we may be always truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you want to know the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, the best way is simply to ask the Father to send you the gift of his Holy Spirit.